from the Redneck Garage. Well, today is a gorgeous day out here, let me tell you. And I got all the brake lines put on yesterday. Now, the next thing that we have to do is bleed the brake system. And that's one of the funnest things you can do when you're rebuilding a vehicle. <laughs> no, it's not. It sucks. I could either be sitting in the Jeep saying, okay, pump it up, hold it, release it, um, you know, for three or four hours. Or from Motive Products, I can buy a power bleeder. Let's take a look at that. Ta-da! This is the power bleeder and it's got an attachment for the Jeeps They make different attachments for all different kinds of vehicles. So I just bought one that did this and it was around 60 bucks and it does Chrysler's and Jeeps because of the fitting on the top of the uh, master cylinder. Now we're going to fill this up with brake fluid, pump it up to about 15 pounds and it's going to pressurize that brake fluid to come through and all we got to do is open the petcock, close it up on the bleeder screws and you've got a air free system and it couldn't get easier than that. Now I was really dreading doing this job but with this, man I'm thinking this is gonna be pretty cool so let's get going first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put some fluid in the master cylinder go ahead and fill it up Ooh, that's clean make sure you don't get brake fluid on any of your paint parts or if you do wipe it off now I'm gonna add the rest of my fluid to my brake bleeder kit Now I'll go ahead and attach this here. I'm going to pump up my brake bleeder until it gets up to 15 pounds of pressure. Randy's here! Hey. Huh. You probably can't see me because of my camouflage. Do what? You can't see me because of my camouflage. Where'd he go? Where's he at? He's standing in the brake fluid like a re. Um, this is what happens when you fill it up with brake fluid and you got some pretty good sized leaks. I had one on the caliper and I had one in the very back. So I'm going to do a little cleanup and then we're going to go on. Boring. He's actually doing some work. Now that the driveway's wet, it gives me an excuse to have a beer. <laughs> All right, I found some more brake fluid after I ran the last quart down the driveway. <laughs> so I'm going to fill this thing back up. We're looking underneath to see if there's any brake fluid running out like there was before and it looks like it's pretty good so I'm going to watch the pressure on here and it should stay pretty constant and then we should be able to bleed it out. I've pumped it up to about 10 pounds which should be uh, sufficient maybe a little bit more but this is full of brake fluid here and you can see the air kind of coming out from the master cylinder. How cool is that? While I was at it, I went ahead and bought a power bleeder uh, recovery unit, which is basically a jug with a wire on it and a hose, and that goes into your bleeder screw. You can capture it again and pour it back in, do whatever you want to with it, but it keeps it from going all over your driveway like when I didn't have those two lines hooked up correctly that ran out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it always works better with a blue moon. What? Or yuck. Okay, I've got it set up. You got your hose coming off here, off your bleeder screw, right? Here's my bleeder wrench. Here, here's the recovery jug, and when I open it up, you should see fluid coming out. A little cracker open. Oh yeah! Look at that. See the fluid right here. You want to open it up to you don't see any bubbles in this section here and it was good and clear I didn't have any bubbles so I'll do the other four wheels and may have to do it twice just to make sure there's no air left this thing is slick I think I got all the air out of it but basically you got your recovery jar here and the hose is hooked up and you're gonna just loosen it up but you can see on that top line it's a steady seam of fluid and that's what we're looking for tighten it back up here's a recovery jar awesome all right, so Randy brought, loaned me some denatured alcohol. The only thing we got left is to clean this thing out because brake fluid is some nasty, nasty crap. Worse than your um, stove pipe and your wife in the middle of the night. What? Sorry about the weed eaters. Was it stove piping? What is it? Um, Dutch oven. My bad, Dutch oven. <laughs> stove pipe, what's the difference? So we put a little alcohol in it, mix it around. That should be enough. <clears throat> Dutch oven. I haven't heard that in a while. Stovepipe, Dutch oven, whatever. 
I'm a member of the Dutch Oven Society. Yeah. Shake it around a little bit, get all that nasty brake fluid out. And then just pump it through. And that should do it. All right, so that's about it for the brakes, man. I can tell you this, that the Motive Products Power Blader was really super cool, man. It worked like a champ. No pumping of the brakes. When I first put it in, I pumped them a little bit and some of the air came out. But other than that, I mean, it came out clear. No bubbles in any of the lines. The brake pedal is hard as rock. Um, may have to bleed it again. I don't know if it didn't get all the air out, but as far as I can tell, all of it's out. The brake pedal's hard. So super cool. I was very, very uh, impressed with this. Now you can order different adapters for it. Let's say you have a different kind of vehicle that you want to bleed out. Uh, 25 to 30 bucks gets you a different adapter that mounts to the same bleeder. Uh, I just bought the one that does the Jeeps because that's all I have right now that I'm using it on. But uh, I was impressed. I got a link down below if you want to get one for your Jeep. If you're doing a brake job, like a complete one, new lines or new wheel cylinders in the back, this thing is the real deal, let me tell you. So coming up, uh, the only thing we got lacking on the major parts is to put it in our clutch and slave master cylinder. That'll be cool because then we can actually put it in neutral when it's running. And uh, the steering, hook up the steering and the new bearing and then weld on that part onto the frame that's the support piece. Um, everything else is mostly interior work and like a couple odds and ends. I'm guessing next week we'll be able to drive this thing around the block, maybe on a milk carton, maybe get some seats in it, I don't know. But I'm excited. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Key, turning wrenches.